She is here, Malcolm. Set. I remember. Huh? What was it? This picture. I was just a young nipper of ten. Kano was my hero. Then. Your hero? Yeah. I know what you saw in this picture. Saw? Yeah. The evil. It's back. And my husband? <laughs> it meant me too late for you. What? Yeah, lady. Sit down. I have something to tell you. Arno and his first wife adopted me. I, at that time, he was a good man, respected by his colleagues, loved by his wife, admired by his audiences. But all that changed when he got the book. He gained immense powers through contact with the black forces. Through the book, he unleashed a demon. An entity so evil it had no name, no worldly description. This thing came to possess Kano, audience all. Kano became like it. He became very powerful, and his his fame and and, and his wealth increased, but he was cursed. He had loved his wife Hortensia and their baby daughter, but all that changed. He became abusive. I don't have proof, but I believe he killed them both. I believe killed all his wives. But Malcolm, what happened the night Carno and Marie died? Carno's final days came when Marie took up with his prophet man, Gaston Warwick. Obviously, Marie suspected Carno of committing terrible deeds with herself as his next victim. Together, Marie and Gaston hatched a plan. He had a new act, an amazing feat of escape. But Marie rigged the machine. Carno couldn't escape. They figured it would kill him. It almost did. For two weeks, Carno lay in a coma. But then, one night, he awoke, swearing revenge. I saw Carno drag an unconscious Gaston into his theater. There, from within the secret passages, I watched as Carno tortured and mutilated the poor man, leaving him dead. Then it was Marie's turn. Totally crazed, 
nothing but pure revenge on his mind. Kano started up that god awful machine, that awful contraption. And before my very eyes, I saw that he died. I'll never forget the look of shocked surprise on Kano's face. Poor Gaston was dying. This was his final heroic act. To my horror, I then saw a demon. That's all I know to call it. Leave his body and disappear through the theater floor. I knew where it was going. Carno knew it too. My only thought was running away, but I, I hesitated when, when I saw Carno going to the same place the demon had gone. I rushed back to the hidden passages just in time to see Carno carrying the chest which held that evil book. Then, just before reaching the chapel, he stumbled and fell for the last time. I saw him cross himself in the Catholic way before dying. I think he was trying to make his peace with God. I picked up the chest containing that horrid book, and I assume the demon itself, and carried it into the chapel. I really don't know what I thought I was doing, but somehow I, I, I felt as if I were containing this cursed evil. I had hoped forever. After leaving the chapel, I, I then dragged Carno's body back to his secret chamber, where he now lies. But wait, Carno's not in his tomb? No, 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 that is Gaston Warwick. He, he was so mutilated that they all thought he was Carno. I said nothing. I let them think what they wanted. And what about the demon? The demon? Oh, that's why I agreed to talk with you. Somehow, it must have been released. What can we do? The only answer is the accursed book. Oh, with it, you, you've got to send that, that thing back to where it came from. Back to the other side. You have seen the book. Yes. I thought so. All right, young woman. You're the only one who can do this. Your husband's soul is ensnared. I'm, I'm not sure what I can do or what can be done for him. But if you can somehow get close to the demon, here's what you can do. You'll need the book holy item, um, the stone of Hammurabi, and the blood of a sentient being. Now, take the book. 